Our road trip today takes us to St. Clairsville, Ohio. It's an important town on I-70 between Columbus and Wheeling, very close to Wheeling. Now here we are on the outskirts of St. Clairsville and there's this old school from the 1870s. They called it the Great Western School. And this will be the first thing we look at, but later on we're gonna go into town and go to a, a museum by the courthouse. Now right beside the old school, the old 1870 school is this tavern. This tavern goes back over a hundred years also. There's lots of history, lots and lots of history in the Ohio Valley. Now St. Clairsville is probably a good 10, 20 miles away from the Ohio River. Again, we're on I-70 between Columbus and pretty close to Wheeling. So this is a close-up picture of the old schoolhouse. Here we have a plaque. Notice the plaque says religion and not Christianity. That's interesting. It's nice that the people get the funds to uh, refurbish these and recondition these old historic buildings and keep them for future generations. That really is something we have to focus on, saving the historic buildings. You can see where the tavern is not too far away from the old schoolhouse. And here they call it the brick tavern, the historic brick tavern. on National Road. National Road goes right through St. Clairsville. Close up of the Brick Tavern. St. Clairsville probably has about 5,000 people in the city limits, but there's lots of beautiful nice houses on the outskirts of St. Clairsville. Beautiful, nice place to live. I would have to say St. Clairsville is one of the nicest places to live in Belmont County, it truly is. So here we are in town, and you can see that the courthouse is a pretty old building. They got old churches. Courthouse goes back to the 1800s also. What we plan to do is they have a museum set up in the old sheriff's residence, and we're gonna go into the museum and talked to the curator. The curator was very, very nice and gave me a tour and told me all about it. Uh, the curator of the museum also said that up until the 1970s, there was Ohio law that required the sheriff to have his residence on site, on the premises. Now here's the Clarendon Hotel. Now it's no longer a hotel, but the Clarendon is also a historic hotel it's right there in downtown St. Clairsville. As you can see, it's a quaint, nice little city, lots of antique stores, lots of nice people. The demographics, I must say, the demographics makes this a really nice city to live in. I'll say that for the last time. So now we're getting close to going on our tour. Now this is the sheriff's residence. Up into the 1970s, Ohio law required that the sheriff and his family live on premises. Now right behind there, that brick building, that's the jail. And of course, here's the, the courthouse. The courthouse goes back to, as we see here, 1885. Lots of history, isn't it? An old historic courthouse from 1885. So let's get back to the sheriff's residence. Now you gotta realize they would just walk the prisoners over to the courthouse. See, the, see in the back there, the old stone building in the back? That was the jail. You can see it to the right there, far right. That's the jail in the back. And, of course, the Queen Anne-style building. Now, yeah, I think the architecture for the residence is Queen Anne. Really a handsome building, isn't it? Very. And as I said, the sheriff, I believe it was Sheriff Neff and his family that was the last sheriffs to live in there. Here we have an old 1827 roadside marker right there in the on the main street of town. So we're back to the uh, courthouse and 
pretty soon we're going to be going in for our tour at the Sheriff's Residence Museum. And it's a museum about the whole area. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get in there. Now, uh, here they're doing renovations in the back on the jail. This is the old stone jail in the back, and they're renovating it. They're trying to, they may even incorporate the tour into the jail, which would be nice. Here's a bigger picture. See how the jail is in the back and the sheriff's residence in a, is in the front? Here we have a man working on the old stone grout, filling in where the old grout may be falling out. This is really, really historic. I mean, many people in this area would have been thrown in that jail for even minor offenses like DUI and that sort of thing. Um, so here we go. We're going to go into the, the museum. The curator is going to give us a little tour. Here's the picture of the current sheriff on the left. And as I said, the museum has a room for every town in Belmont County. Like there's a Bel Air town. There's a Bel Air room. There's a room with, for Martin's Ferry. Here's the, uh, an old sheriff's uniform. There's a room for the historic town of Bethesda. And it goes on. I, I really recommend going to, taking a tour of the museum because you're going to learn a lot about the Ohio Valley. There's Kathy Crumbly, first woman sheriff of Belmont County. You might remember her from the 1970s. She went on Johnny Carson. She was the first woman sheriff in the country. Kathy Crumbly, Belmont County Sheriff. The, uh, a hanging judge. Um, even though he was against capital punishment, he's the only one to have hung a prisoner. Isaac Parker? Isaac Parker, yes. He was yes. a hanging judge. Uh, yes. The, uh, he was against capital punishment, but there was such a horrific crime that he, uh, Thomas Carr, who in the late 1800s had hung his uh, estranged girlfriend, who was only 14 or 15 years, right. who had murdered her and decapitated her. Um, and uh, so Parker so, decided it was. So there, the story is, is that that gentleman was actually hung somewhere on the premises of that were located. Where we're located. Now where at? I don't know. It could have been in the back of the jail at the side. I'm not sure, but that's the story told. Okay. So that was an interesting story. Uh, one of the prisoners was hung on the site and. Through the mu museum, you're going to see lots of historic uniforms. Not only the sheriff uniform, but fire department uniforms. Lots of interesting stuff. So let's go on with the tour. In Colerain, Ohio, which is outside of Martin's Ferry. Guy Fox was a designer. He oh. helped design the USS Constitution. Oh, okay, so the designer was from this area. Yes, okay. he helped design it. That's the ban uh, the Bannock um, Fire Department. Okay, we the fire department, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So it says the information on it right here. Uh-huh. And then there's the story of the uh, the guy that was hung. Mm -hmm. The Valley's mass killer. Thomas Carr. So you remember that schoolhouse we first went to? This is a slate, a roof slate from that old schoolhouse and here's a picture of it in the summertime so you can find out more about the school when you go to the museum and what you know how long cassie was born in henrysburg i didn't know that yeah oh. yeah there's a landmark out there if you drive out through henrysburg on uh the old 40 um you'll see a um, national road sign historic national road sign of his birthplace. Hmm. And what's that uniform there? That's an old, old band uniform. Old band uniform. Yes. So this is the Barnesville room. Yes, that's Henrysburg. This is the Summerton area, uh, Temperanceville area. And of course your Barnesville. Is that like a baseball? This is a, that there is an old softball uniform that the women wore while the men were in war. Okay, so. They continued the tradition. 
of softball during the war. Oh, yes, yeah, the baseball. So, mm. and this here, I thought, found this interesting. This ball, this um, believe struck from a ball chain uh, convict working on the old National Road, and it was this was found near Morristown. Mm. So that was actually a convict. Mm-hmm. So, could you imagine the convicts uh, hauling the ball around like this, working on the side of the highway? No, I don't think the Supreme Court would allow that today. But who knows? Maybe we need to go back to the old days. Travelers coming to visit them by horse and wagon. Mm -hmm. And then the railroads came into effect. And the railroad went through Barnesville and missed Morristown. So that's when Morristown went through a very much depression because people started traveling by railroad. Your your goods and everything came by railroad and Barnesville were able to reap benefits from the railroads. And when they built, they built Victorian style. So like Bethesda and Morristown, they didn't uh, benefit from the railroad, huh? Not so much. <laughs> so the early ends were yeah, set up. Those, the Bethesda, Morristown, they were all the horse and wagon. So they were set up for horse and wagon, yeah, huh? Yes, yeah. To the right and go up on what's called Church Street. And there's four churches on that in Morristown. One church is now privately owned. It's called the Vestry. That building was built in 1876. It's still standing. They use it as a social hall. They, When that building was built, it cost $1,400. Wow, Church Street, huh? Yeah, Church Street. It's very, very, Morristown's a historic landmark. So, that, Very so you have to put that on the list of to do. This house is still standing, and actually one of our past sheriffs, Tom McCourt, lives in this house, and it is on Main Street. It used to be a sheriff of Belmont County, a sheriff. and he's retired, and him and his wife bought that house and restored it. So an ex-sheriff lives in that house. Yeah. What's his name again? Tom McCourt. Oh, Tom McCourt. Yes, yes. And he lives in that house. And you'll notice that some of these houses are now have people residing in those homes. They've restored them to their uh, natural, as natural as could be, back to the and government funding for historic preservation. Oh, that's good, huh? Yes. So, living in Las Vegas, I kind of found this uh, article interesting. It was hanging on the wall from 1948. And it says here, the bandits are back in Bel Air. Slot machines. So, apparently... Bel Air was able to get the slot machines out of town, but then they made a reappearance. The slot machines are back in town, and they got the article there, probably in the bars and everything, they have a slot machine. But the uh, it's sort of like Steubenville. People don't realize that before Dean Martin got famous in Hollywood and as a singer, he was a blackjack dealer in Steubenville, Ohio. So even though gambling was not legal on the Ohio River, they had gambling houses in Steubenville and all along the Ohio River, even towns like Bel Air, they had gambling houses. And that's the way things were back in the 40s. And who knows, maybe even back in the 20s and the 30s. So the mayor says that the uh, slot machines are back in all the old locations. Another thing I found interesting was that they gave them a fine, or they call it a stipend. It's a $108 stipend and uh, I guess the proprietors just go ahead and pay the $108 fine and the machines were that lucrative. And it says here the fact that the machines are still operating with the, within the knowledge of the city's administration, well, that's, again, it's very interesting. Now, here's a picture of the old historic S Bridge in Blaine. Blaine is just down the road from St. Clairsville heading towards the Wheeling area. So we'll close out the video with some more pictures of downtown St. Clairsville. One thing about this jail is the air was not very good in the jail. From uh, I hear people, I mean, I don't know for a fact, I'm just, but anyhow, I hear from people who were in the jail that one of the windows were broken in the back and the prisoners would go to that back window and try to get some fresh air through the broken window. Now, hey, I'm just, that's what I hear. And here again is the guy that's uh, repairing the grout in the old stone between the, uh, between the stones. We need, we need more workers who can work as stonemasons.
this is a very honorable honorable field so that's it for the museum tour as I and I'll go ahead and recommend that if you're ever in St. Clairsville make sure you stop in there I think it's open on Thursday Friday and Saturday and here's another shot of downtown St. Clairsville Now, if you like shopping, uh, an important uh, mall opened up not far from St. Clairsville in 1978. There was a mall that opened up, and actually the mall kind of hurt a lot of the downtown businesses, but the mall is very, very popular with everybody in the tri-state area. There's also a popular bicycle path that runs two and a half miles through St. Clairsville. It's a very interesting bicycle path because it features a gazebo, a two nature trails, and two tunnels. And I believe it also has an, an, a railroad uh, bridge and has, again, it has a tunnel for the bicyclist to go through. That's very interesting. In the summertime, it's very beautiful here in the summertime. Downtown is a popular location for the lawyers and it's interesting, back in 1833, St. Clairsville contained, uh, they had one brick courthouse, a jail, five churches, 18 stores, several grocery stores, a drugstore, a bookstore, five taverns, and they had four or five doctors, but they had 14 or 15 lawyers. So lawyers were popular in St. Clairsville not only in 1833, but they're also big there today and the town was named after revolutionary war major general arthur st clair